sunlit world of what he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. A dark side. Hey, what's up, and welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. And if you're new to the show, we just want to kind of catch you up. We are your guides to the dark side. We are going through every single episode of the original 80s anthology TV show, Tales from the Dark Side. And uh, yeah, today we got episode four, The Odds, uh, written and directed by James Sodwith. Uh, and the original air date for this episode was October 21st, 1984. Now, before we start, before we get into this episode, I just want to shout out to Jason Hill. I want to give him a huge thanks. Uh, Jason Hill from the Direct VHS podcast. He sent us the original Tales from the Dark Side comic series that Joe Hill put out. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to crack into them yet, but I definitely want to read them and, and, and cover them at some point. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thanks. And we really appreciate the support. And uh, and thanks for sending us the Tales from the Dark Side comic books. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Jason. They, uh, you know, now that you mention it, I, I'm thinking back to when I saw the picture of it. And they look really cool. Oh uh, yeah, they're pretty. They're they're pretty neat. I mean, like, they look neat. I, if they're good or not, I don't know. I haven't read them, so. <laughs> Sure. They're horrible. Totally awful. I mean, what are the odds? Uh, duh, the odds TM. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Chris, I believe you were also gifted the Tales from the Dark Side novel. Yeah. Where where it had all the short stories in it. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Um, yeah, Brendan Lemune got it for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I read through the first couple, uh, you know, stories, and uh, it's awesome. It's cool seeing it, you know, actually reading through the stories rather than seeing it in the show. Oh, dude, it's really cool. Yeah, that was really cool to get that. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to Brendan for that. Yeah. yeah. Shout outs to our patron, by the yeah. way, Brendan Lemune. Oh, Brendan's a big uh, supporter of the show, and we really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash movie dumpster. We got a ton of stuff on there. Commentary tracks, watch alongs. Eh? Eh? Uh, go check it out. Oh, and there's shirts. There's Talks from the Dark Side shirts. Yeah. That's right. There is official Talks from the Dark Side shirts that you can buy in the Movie Dumpster store. Yeah. Head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com. They're pretty sweet. Definitely grab one. <laughs> uh, we, we sent Chris one, but apparently he got the wrong package. <laughs> yeah, I got somebody else. I didn't. It wasn't even a Talks from the Dark Side shirt. It was, I guess, the printing company sent a different job. Oh. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> he got a fucked up pack. I got a completely different shirt. Uh, just P.S. If anybody gets a, a fucked up pack or something's not printed right or whatever, just just let us know and we we will refill that for you. We'll get to, uh, get you a brand new uh, shirt, no problem. Yeah, mine was uh, Model Gurus. So uh, <laughs> shout out to them for the free shirt. <laughs> oh my God! Speaking of, speaking of that uh, that uh, that novel book with all the short stories in it, the odds is actually in that short story collection. I didn't read it per se. I kind of breezed through it, thumbed through it, if you will. Um, and it's pretty faithful to the to the uh, to the episode itself. Yeah, it adds a lot more, you know, a little more backstory and a little more like dynamic to it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, totally different reading through that. I thought it was I thought it was really cool because the the biggest thing that stuck out for me was uh, the fact that the odds, quote unquote, TM is Tommy Vale's nickname. That was the big thing for me, the to the, 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 the takeaway from, from reading the the, uh, the short story. So uh, I guess, Sean, Sean, you want to plot crunch this real quick? <laughs> Do I want to plot crunch this? Sure. So uh, we, we go, basically this entire episode takes place in this uh, this bar uh, where we, we see this kind of like bookie type character played by Danny Aieo and uh, his buddy uh, essentially working at the bookie angle, you know, they're, they're placing bets for you know different games horse races and the like and uh out of the great beyond tom noonan comes to fuck with this guy and steal all his money and we kind of follow them on this journey man tom noonan is a fucking gem in this danny aiello is amazing yeah this is like this is solid casting all around in this episode 
I don't know if this is one of my favorite episodes, but it's really good, and it's one it's one that I remember like vividly. It's a good ghost story, I think. It's a it's a better ghost story than The Conjuring Three. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, if you heard the ripe review on that, I was kind of middling, but I'm going to probably argue that was probably better than this. I was going to say, plug the plug the episode here. <laughs> <laughs> so so we open up in the bar that, that Sean was just talking about, and um, Danny Aiello plays Tommy Vale, uh, and he's this uh, grizzled old bookie, you know, this, this old Italian bookie, and he's got this buddy, uh, Horace, uh, that's kind of like his his sidekick guy, and um, you know it, business has been slow the past couple days. Uh, they got no bets or what have you. Oh, a thing to point out real quick here is kind of one of the things that makes this episode you know so good for me is the entire episode is takes place in like one room. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like there's no flashbacks or cutaways. We're all we're just in this one bar the entire episode. Like Danny Aiello does never leaves his seat. Right? <laughs> no, he do- uh, he does in one scene. He gets up to use the phone. Oh yeah. But for the most part, he's in that he's been in there for he's been in that seat for thirty years. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the ass creases and everything. He like slides in and he fits perfectly. If anybody else sits there, they like fucking wobble around. Yeah. You know, you, you can visit that bar and uh, you know, his ass cheeks are still like <laughs> <laughs> You, some people even say they hear a laughter in the air. Uh, yeah, they, they get me your soak. And you hear it off in the distance, yeah. But yeah, it's weird. It's like the whole episode kind of has this uneasiness to it, and having it in one, you know, one place definitely uh, helps that. No, absolutely, and it, it, I, I think it utilizes it really well as far as storytelling goes. And when you have like two really great actors like opposite each other. You you can't beat it. Like it, it doesn't matter where the fuck they are, as long as they're talking to each other, you, you're entertained. So he's sitting there, you know, blowing smoke up his ass about how he's never lost a bet, and uh, much like uh, it was the episode with those two misery fucks. Oh, I'll give you a million. Yeah, a, a breeze shoots through the room. So I'm like, okay, Tails is back at it again with the ghost business. <laughs> that cold breeze blew through an open window, but that's not really open, or a fan that's not really on? Yeah, the fan, they even focus on it. They both look up the bartender and Horace. They're like, huh. And then I love this shot. They pan over to Tom Noonan, and you, you kind of know he's a ghost, but you don't know the semantics of it yet. I mean, you could maybe just think he's a guy that walked in, but he's wearing this white suit, white hat. It really... It looks awesome. Stand there like some like weird sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> How did you see that in your corner in the middle of the night? Just Tom Noonan snum- smiling at you? How you doing, Sean? I like birds. You open your eyes and he's just still staring at you. Yeah, Tom Noonan in a white suit. <laughs> With his weird spindly fingers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. Sh- yeah, like Sean said, like I love that shot of him too because he's just like... He's enveloped in light. Yeah, this whole series has that... that- great soft look and he and he's backed by uh this blue light and he's an all white you know he's tall uh intimidating dude with this fucking panama jack hat on and he comes in spectrally through the door and sits down with tommy vale and uh he pulls out like five fucking i don't know what silver doubloons what what are these things (laughs) I don't know, but each one's worth a hundred bucks. Yeah, each one's worth a hundred bucks. I thought they were quarters. Are they? I guess they're silver note uh, coins that are worth a hundred bucks a piece. I don't know. They're uh, Chuck E. Cheese tokens. <laughs> <laughs> he says to the guy. He says to Danny. A- Is it Danny Aiello? Or- uh, I think it's Aiello. It's Aiello. Okay. I'm just gonna say. Says, what was his name in this show? Tommy Vale. So he says to Tommy Vale. He's like, ah, oh, you know, they're mint. He's like, they're not in circulation. He's like, trust me. Put this money on this horse. <laughs> yeah. He walks in and he like bets on this fucking horse that hasn't won a race. What was it? Like a 60 to one or some shit? <laughs> yeah. Horse is like, you're never going to win, pal. Good luck. 40 to one. And then, he's, and then he says his line. It's like, I never refuse a bet. I never turned down a bet in my entire fucking life, he says. And then he's like, yeah, you know, it's too late, though. You're too late. Yeah, throw on the radio. So they throw it on. And it's clear his horse is not going to win. So uh, Horace, he has this fucking calculator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of an element throughout this entire episode. And he's playing fucking, you know, different tunes on it. And he breaks it out and he starts doing the... 
he's like smiling. And then they hear, oh, Tumbleweed's coming out front. Tumbleweed's going out front. And then John Candy's in the corner screaming, no, Tumbleweed, no. <laughs> what is it? Uh, something's daughter uh, coming up the front. Uh, and they win. Yeah, somebody's daughter's coming up the front. Yeah. I love when Tom Noonan sits down. I'm sorry, I just want to backtrack. We'll put the fucking needle back real quick. When Tom Noonan sits down, he starts like laughing at uh, Danny Aiello, and Danny Aiello's like, "What? What is somebody tickling your fucking leg or something? What? What? What's so funny?" Yeah, he's just he's just sitting there with this this grin. Yeah, and it's like just just the between the two of them, it's like the looks they give each other is like that's like the best part. Oh yeah. So he wins the bet, and they're like shocked. They can't believe it. And he uh, pushes over this stack of money. 20 grand he wins. Yeah. And they do a lot of stuff in this where they kind of like imply a passage of time just by like kind of moving the camera into a different part of the bar and then coming back. And it's like, oh, okay, it's the next day. Yeah. And, you know, through this process, you know, Tommy's always talking. You know, him and Horace are always talking. He's like, I never turned down a bet. I never, you know, I nobody's ever broke me ever before. And, uh, you know, Tom Noonan comes back. He's like, I see you got my fucking 20 grand there. He's like, uh, I like little bites, you know what I'm saying? I, the, the Orioles, I I, mean, I like the Orioles. So he's 20 fucking great. You're looking at it. This is my bet. Yeah, the, ac- the accent too. It's like, you really have to emphasize like how good his accent is. <laughs> it's great, dude. Well, the whole thing too is when he does come to get that money, he, um, you see in a scene before that where he, you know, where, where Danny Aiello, he has all these fucking, you know, bookings all over his table. And he's like, how the hell does everybody know this? Somebody, everybody's got a hunch or something. Oh, yeah, and yeah. He, and he says to Tom Noonan, he's like, oh, what are you passing your hunches around town? He's like, I like to share. I like to see people smiling. I like to spread the good word there, Tommy Vale. I'm like a little boy. <laughs> a little fucking blade. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to win this. Uh, and you're going to fucking go out of business. Is this too big for you, Tommy? What do you say there, kid? <laughs> Right, because he's betting the money he just won, and then he's like, uh, hold on a second. He's like, I gotta call somebody. And then he goes, he goes, uh, excuse me, uh, you got a dime? And he goes, all right, so it's 20 grand and a dime on it. <laughs> I love it. He's like, he's like, add it to the bet there, Tommy. 20, uh, you know, 60 grand and a dime, you fuck. And then Horace is on the calculator doing the math like, wow, that's 240 grand. No wonder he had to make a call. <laughs> Oh man, he, he he he. Tom Noonan like laughs at one point while they're conversing, and Tommy realizes he's like he's like oh shit he's like you're fucking you're Bill Lacey, and uh, he's like Horace he's like come here he's like look at this fucking guy and he's like does he remind you of something think way back yeah well at first Horace is like it's his son yeah it's like yeah you're, you're Bill Lacey's kid yeah <laughs> so you're Bill Lacey's kid huh. And they're just talking shit about him. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny, though, because even though Horace is also talking shit, he's at the same time like, ah, yeah, you know, Bill Lacey, he was a good guy. I went to his funeral. What's a, what a shame. But he was a bum. And Tommy's just like, he was a bum. He's yeah. a loser. <laughs> Fuck you, him. You better respect the dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. So then we uh, we cut back to this uh, next day, and of course he lost. Uh, Tommy Vale lost. <laughs> so he's got this massive stack of money he's got to hand over to Tom Noonan, and he is sweating bullets big time. He has just made $240,000. Oh, excuse me. We, we missed it because, no, he takes the sixty grand and he bets on a uh, uh, a boxing match. No, it was the Orioles and then the boxing match. Yeah, the Orioles and then the boxing match. And he's like, I like to, listen, nice box. I like, I like to box. I like <laughs> boxing. I like Jorge Ramirez on the fucking whatever at the, at the arena. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, fine, what's your bet? He's like, you're looking at it, fucker. Right. And then we cut to the next day. And then, like, you just see all his winnings and uh, Tommy sweating up a storm. And he's like, all right. He's like, you want to make any more bets? He's like, I'm in charge of the odds. TM, yeah, and I guess that's his nickname, right? Okay. <laughs> and he's like, all right, if you, because he wants to make a bet for his life. You know, another one of those. Literally, I was talking about those misers earlier. Yeah. And a similar kind of concept. Obviously, in that one, he was buying a soul. Yeah. But another, like, bet your life on it kind of scenario. Well, he's, so Bill, Bill says, even money, we're going to do even money, and I bet you that at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you'll be fucking dead. And he's like, well, that's easy. You'll, you know, Tommy's like, that's easy. You'll just shoot me and take the money. He's like, no, no, no. When the when you go to the coroner, it'll they'll find out that you died of natural causes. And he's like, all right, <laughs> right. He agrees to it, and then the waiting game begins. Yes, yeah, so they're sitting in the bar waiting until eight o'clock in the morning, 
And, uh, you know, just sitting around, they bring their money guys in. They got like, you know, shady guys with briefcases just hanging in the back. I love the uh, guy that comes in with Tom Noonan. He's just standing there like Grim Reaper ass motherfucker, just standing there staring off into the distance for the whole eight hours. Yeah, even Horace says something. He's like, oh, that guy, this, this guy gives me the creeps. Dude, he shows up with fucking Peter Murphy, all right? He, he's like, come <laughs> on in here. And uh, they sit down, and I guess like uh, Chris was saying, they, they're going to have the uh, next eight hours from midnight to 8 a.m. They're going to just sit there and, and just uh, see what happens. You broken yet, Tommy? You going to take any more bets there, Tommy? What do you say there, Tommy? You, Joe, you really got to add like his, like his, like a, a line here or something. <laughs> I know. Just so everyone can hear this accent. I like big payoffs and little birdies. So I'm going to put my money on the Orioles. 20000 it sound I dude, I love it so much. Like what is that? Chicago? What like what is that? I don't know. It's like it's like twenties wise guy mixed I don't know what it is. Yeah. I he's gotta be trying to do a Jersey accent with uh Danny Aiello uh across from him. Or like a New York accent, but like not nailing it at all right Right. it's like three different like yeah it's like three different accents he's like super weaselly too like like danny aiello's like he's like yeah yeah give me your fucking soak or whatever's you know uh uh, harris you know come over here with the things and then you know we'll do the bets or whatever and then fucking tom noonan kind of sounds like this right and then again perfect casting (laughs) they they both they're both perfect at it uh yeah they're fucking great so then tommy he like shuts his eyes He's gonna take a nap, and the, and the uh, his his money handler comes over to him and shakes him. He's like, "Whoa, what the hell's that about?" He's like, "I'm just taking a nap. Don't worry about it." Like five seconds after he closes his eyes. Yeah, I'm relaxing. The bet is I don't die. I'm allowed to sleep. You fuck. Yeah, boss, boss. Yeah, boss, boss. So then, as he's sleeping, every hour, this fucking calculator has like an alarm that goes off, and it wakes him up every time. And then, uh, you know, he wakes up, and then Horace is like, oh, thank God. But, like, obviously, Tommy, every time he wakes up, he's a little bit sweatier. He's a little bit clammier. Yeah. It is hot in there, though. He says multiple times to Horace to get him a fucking soak. And a soak is a beer, by the way. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the heat up to, like, 80 or 85 to try to get the bar uh, flies to buy more beers. It's warm enough to keep those French fries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he's eating these French on. fries for like days. It was soggy. He's eating those through through the entire episode. Uh, and he's licking his fucking fingers and shit. Little snack. All right, cut. We got to get Danny some more fries. We were talking before we got on, uh, Chris and I. You know, we saw this. We've seen this episode a bunch of times, and we we didn't we never knew that he that they said soak, S O A K. I always thought it was soap. I thought it was grab me a soap. Because of the suds, like on the top of a beer. Okay. And then Chris <laughs> thought he said it was a sub. Yeah, I, I had to rewind it. I had no idea what he was actually saying. <laughs> Give me a goddamn hoagie stat. Give me a fucking sub. Give me a meatball palm, you fuck. Because now going through it to like analyze it, it's like I want to hear, you know, what they're actually saying. Totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. first time I actually picked up on this. So a beer is a soak now. I it must have been some uh, late eighties colloquialism that uh, no longer exists, or at least not in our circles. We're bringing it back. That shit's from the twenties. We're bringing it back for sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm holding on to this for sixty fucking years. <laughs> it's been thirty five years, dear Horace. We don't give a timeline in the fucking episode, but I'm sure it's the old. Oh well, that's true. I I'm thinking about just the production date, but you're right. It could have just been whenever. Well, actually, they got that fucking calculator. So what am I talking about? It definitely takes place in nineteen eighty four. Well, it was a nice thought, Joe. <laughs> it's right right around the time when calculators were like just weird technology. It's, <laughs> it's like it's a calculator. What is that thing? I I don't need that. I can compute with my fucking brain. And it's like I got a I got a pencil. That's yeah. all I, I love that though because he keeps pointing at his head with the pencil, and uh, he he tells uh, Horace he's like, you know, if I do die, I want you to play at my funeral with that thing. He's like, what? <laughs> That's a good gag, dude. Yeah. So then, you know, hour goes by, hour goes by. We're coming down to the final moments, and he's still alive. And then uh, we get this scene where he doesn't wake up when the alarm goes off, you know, at like 7 o'clock. And Horace is like, oh, no, oh, no, don't die, boss, don't die. 
wake up, puss. And he fucking starts, you know, he wakes up and starts fucking laughing at him. Yeah, it's like 7.55 at this point. Yeah, seven fi- I know that it's 7.55, Tommy Vale. And he's like, oh, you should be sweating right now, Tom Noonan. Like, you know, you, you're going to fucking lose. <laughs> I don't sweat the small stuff. And this is where he just totally calls him out on his shit. Man, this is so good because he's like, oh, yeah, you used to sweat the small stuff and you choked on the big stuff. I know it was you, you fuck. As soon as you walked in that door in the beginning of the episode, I knew it was you, Bill Lacey. Oh, you didn't get that script from uh, that uh, <laughs> fat uh, American over there drinking American tequila? Daniel Baldwin, he didn't give it to you? Nah, I knew the whole time. Damn. Dude, he's passed out with fucking hamburger bags all around the place. He's got those moldy fries on, the, on his fucking table for sure. <laughs> he's been nibbling on them, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like the whole episode, it looks like uh, Tom Noonan has the upper hand. And, uh, you know, he's all proud and, you know, he's making his money and stuff. And, you know, Tom Vale's sweating and everything. And now here's where we're, where he's like kind of confronting him. He's like, oh, I knew it was you. He's like, you're Bill Lacey. He's like, you took that dive off the bridge because you couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah. And what does he say? He's like, oh, you left a, left a wife with TB. He's like, oh, you had a wife with TB and two kids and you killed yourself? Like, fuck you. And it's like, ah. Like, they're, like, the guy's a piece of shit for killing himself, but also, like, he was pushed into a corner. Like, I, I get it. Well. and But the other guy just is a piece of shit because he's taking advantage of him and causing him to lose all his fucking money. And it's like, you don't really know exactly what happened. It's just like, you have this dialogue between the two of them. And you're just kind of getting hints at, like, what actually happened. Tommy says that, you know, he's he's like, he's like, nobody told you to fucking bet over your head. And I don't muscle nobody. Like, that's your fault that you fucking bet. And you... You you threw it all away, right? And then he, ha- I guess he had people coming after him, or whatever, and he killed himself. Well, I think it's it, it's just more so the case where it's like you know people that have these gambling addictions, they they get in too deep, and these people take advantage of them. Like, oh, uh, should I stop? No, nah, no, nah, you're hot. Come on. Well, that's what he says by I don't muscle no one, meaning like you know, right? He's not sending anybody after him for the money. It's more of just like he ruined his life. Move on. Well, no, he's he's not necessarily coaxing him to bet, but he's not telling him not to either. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, exactly. But yeah, he's like, you're a fucking asshole, Lacey. You always were, you fucking loser. <laughs> and now Tom Noonan's sweating. Oh, yeah. He's like, you're getting tips from the, from the other side. You were going to come over here. You're going to break me down. You were going to fucking, what, run, bankrupt me or some shit? Break me? Fuck you. Uh, he keeps repeating this line, too. He says, uh, don't ever underestimate the power of the human will. And he says that, like, over and over. Oh, yeah, it's a very strong thing. So it turns out that Bill Lacey, like, was he? He was Bill Lacey was also a cheat too. Like he was a cheating fuck and trying to trick people out of money and and trying to you know get around get around shit. So, <laughs> so it, it, the clock strikes eight and the fucking alarm goes off, right? And he's still and Tommy Vale's still alive. And Tom Noonan gets fucking pissed. You know, Tommy Vale's guys takes the money and fucking runs out. Yeah, he's gone. The second turns eight, he's he's out the door with both briefcases. Tom Noonan and Peter Murphy get up and they fucking like walk towards the door and disappear into the afterlife. And he's like, and Tommy's laughing his ass off because he's and Horace is like, "What's so funny, boss?" And he's like, "That fucking idiot, Lacey. You're a loser, Lacey." He fucking turned back the clock five minutes or ten minutes or some shit. It had to be like five. I think it was five <laughs> minutes. It's the oldest trick in the book. I really made a monkey out of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's another line. It's like you don't hear that too often. <laughs> so then he says to Horace, "Yeah, yeah, hand me that book, by the way." And he he hands him like his bookie's book. And he, he starts writing in there, the last will and testament. And then Horace is like, oh, wait a second, boss, you won. He's like, ah. He's like, if he came for me, my time must be up. I just got to fill this out real quick. He's like, ah, I had a good life. I never went out. I never lost. I was never broken. He's like, never forget. Always trust the the power of the human will, Horace. It's very powerful, Horace. Yeah. He's like, ah, you'll be okay. I'm leaving most of it to you. He's like, oh, I don't believe what you're saying, boss. He's like, that's okay. Get me a soak. He, we, and then we cut back, and he's just fucking dead as a doornail, like, laying up against the fucking wall. But I love the lead into this, because yeah. he's like, but he's laughing into his uh, demise. He's like, huh, I can't believe I'm going to die laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he says, like, three times, I'm going to die laughing. The fucking weasels, weasels are in the corner, man. One of these days you're going to die laughing, Tommy, and you did. Yeah, Horace goes to the bar. The pencil rolling off the table. That's like, that's my favorite part. You know, this whole ending right here is, is so good. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And then like Joe said, he's just sitting there dead with a smile on his face and it kind of ends right then and there. Yeah, with his eyes still open. It, I love it too because like the fucking alarm goes off on the on the uh, calculator. Yeah. And that that's right where it ends. It's like you have the credits as 
this song that you've heard through the whole thing just starts that that weird calculator song. chime yeah because it's yeah. it's actually the it's actually eight o'clock and now he's done you know he's gonna die so so yeah i mean so so what we all think of this episode oh it's great this is this is a really solid one i really love this one man um Again, it's not one of my favorites, but I just it's so it's so cozy and it plays like like an old mobster film with a ghost element to it that I'm I'm really into. Um, Again, it has it has that 80s softness to it. And Tom Noonan and Danny Aiello are are just are forces on the screen, man, when when they're going back and forth with each other or even like, um, you know, if it's if it's just them talking like I it's just really good. Um, it's written really well, especially again for that one room kind of thing where, you know, there's not a, there's not a lot of action in this. It's literally all, it's all dialogue and it, I, I think it lands, I think it lands really well. Yeah. It's, and it's like having that one room setting, it just, it's very claustrophobic and, um, you know, throughout this series, it's like a lot of my, like, you know, the best episodes are just like drenched in that atmosphere. Yeah. And, uh, this is one of them. Everybody's very like sweaty and it's very like hazy and and eerie a lot of the parts. I don't know, it feel it feels really good. Uh you know, it's like a wise guy ghost story and I'm kind of into it. So so yeah, I I I I really enjoy this one. When I did my initial uh watch of this, I was like, "Man, I really hated this." And uh I watched it a second time and I liked it a little bit more. I, I didn't come out hating it. I was just kind of in the middle of the road on it. Like like you guys have been saying this whole time. Our two leads are great in this. They kind of bounce off each other perfectly. And I get a kick out of Horace. This guy's just for a side character that's just kind of in every scene. He adds every he adds a lot of a lot to it when you don't really need anymore. So it's like a nice additional cherry on top. Absolutely. But uh, you know, I don't know. Just the uh I like a lot of this on paper. It just didn't really play for me. And, uh, you know, I can't love them all. I mean, I don't think I necessarily love the last one either, but I, I, you know, have now my iconic Instagram post for those that saw it with, uh, please don't help me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we got one cooking for this one. I'm not sure, but, uh, there's gotta be one for this eating the, eating the French fries. Maybe Oh, it could be with a wet cigar. I'll be, I could be eating French fries saying, you know, don't ever underestimate the the power of a human will as I'm chewing on French fries. I I don't know. There's an idea. Or you could do the box line. Box. I like, <laughs> I like boxing. It's a nice box. I like boxing. We'll workshop it. I love it, dude. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see this next one, to be perfectly honest, because I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, It's funny because, uh, I mean, we'll get to it, but I, I don't... Chris yeah, I don't want to give too much away. I just, yeah. on, our, on the DVD uh, menu, that was the next one was Mookie and Pookie, and you've been telling me about that one since the beginning of this uh, show. It's weird, and I, I like it. I don't think... Uh, Chris, are you a fan of that one? No. Yeah, I like, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll skip it, usually. <laughs> So that should be a good one. So yeah, so so that'll be a fun one to talk about like, for sure. It, it's fine. I get it. You know, we'll get into it. But yeah, we're gonna have a nice uh, conversation about that one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so yeah. If if you're not caught up yet, uh, this is our fourth uh, t- talks from the dark side episode. So go uh, make sure you're all caught up. We're gonna try to drop these every Wednesday. No fifth episode. Is it fifth? Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm yeah. sorry. Excuse me. Got to count that pilot. I keep forgetting about that pilot. Uh, it's the four. Yeah, because this is the fourth episode in the release schedule, but it's the fifth episode of our show. That's a milestone. I think so, yeah. We hit five, guys. Boom. So we'll celebrate with uh, five soaks. <laughs> get me a soak, would you, Dan? Got my soak right here. So we're try- We're going to try to get these out uh, every Wednesday for you and try to get like two to three because we want to we want to nail the uh, the entire first season by, by December, um, and that's how we're going to do it. So uh, you'll probably get two this month, um, but, but we're working on it. We're trying to get the schedule together and uh, and get these get these out for you as your kind of win- Wednesday fix, if you will. Definitely check out Movie Dumpster in the main feed and uh, buy a shirt. Buy and buy a Talks from the Dark Side Dark Side shirt. Uh, support the show. Support your favorite show. I come on and uh, tag tag it on Instagram. We'll post it. Yeah, tag it on Instagram. We'll post it, and don't forget to follow Chris as well at Tapehell. Oh man, you've been coming out with some new stuff lately too, Chris. Yeah, yeah, starting to uh, get back into it. Um, yeah, really cool. So, um, yeah, for anyone that didn't catch it, um, Tapehell is a little uh, Instagram project I'm doing where I'll showcase, uh, you know, movie soundtracks 
with uh, some little videos. Yeah, that slugs one you did was great, dude. And I loved it. That was a lot of fun. I actually got lucky <laughs> with uh, finding like 20 slugs in my backyard. Got a hand, handful <laughs> of slugs. I thought it was great. I was great. wondering where the hell you got those things from. It's like you go to the pet store. Uh, <laughs> weird question, but do you have slugs? That, that took me a total of like maybe two minutes to find all those slugs. Oh, really? my God. Yeah. And uh, my, I just want to find one, have it crawl across the tape, you know, as I'm, you know, playing the uh, cassette and everything. Sure. And uh, yeah, just got lucky. Found like 20 of them. <laughs> oh, my God. It's such a cool, it's such a cool post. Definitely go check it out at tape underscore hell on Instagram and uh, follow Chris at uh, La Fin Absolute Du Monde. Wow. I've never heard that spoken aloud. I had no idea what it said. I was just like, I know that's Chris's account. That's all I know. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Is that from something? Just side note real quick. Um, I actually started as uh, La Fin du Monde and then actually switched it because of the, uh, there's a um, another anthology series, Masters of Horror. Okay. But there's a uh, John Carpenter episode where um, there's like this, um, you know, Joe, you've seen it. It's, yeah, Cigarette uh, Burns. Yeah. It's like this secret, you know, this uh, underground film called La Fin Absolute du Monde. Where it's oh. like, uh, just drives everyone crazy. The director was murdered, stuff like okay, that. Okay, so. say no more. I feel like there's a mini sode in the future for that because now I need to see this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. It's, dude, it's so good. It's amazing. It's um, really good. What's his name? Uh, Norman Reedus is in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Probably the best see, thing I'm, he's I'm ever been I'm on a show in. with uh, two people here. You know, you got Joe Blade in the Dark here for years. I had no idea that was a fucking movie. I look it up one day. I'm like, how the hell did I not know this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's a solid movie, too. Oh, dude, I love it. Meanwhile, I just have my name backwards, even though I was told on a show last year that that's not necessarily apparent to people, but I hope people understand that. <laughs> hey, just throwing the idea, we could do a, uh, a, a run of Jello episodes. Oh, man, we're, we're, we've been talking about it, so uh, we'll see what's cooking. Definitely would have to have you on for that, 100%. <laughs> And if we're gonna do that, like I wanna, I wanna deep dive in some good shit. Oh, there's so many. We, there's some deep dives we can go in. Yeah. Deep red. And it's not very deep, but that that's one I enjoy. It's a Christmas movie, damn it. <laughs> Sean, come on, it's it's Profondo Rosso. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Profondo Rosso. <laughs> Profondo You're Rosso. Not wrong. <laughs> Profondo Rosso. <laughs> Profounded Rosso. We got to get to the point in Movie Dumpster. Uh, a few more seasons, I'm sure, will be all it will take until we kind of burn through all those traditional Christmas movies and be like, ah, I guess we're going to do Die Hard and Deep Red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's a lot of fucking Christmas bullshit to fucking cut through. I know, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So, uh, until next time, I'm Joe LaScola. I'm Sean Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. The dark side is always there, waiting for us to enter, waiting to enter us. Until next time, try to enjoy the daylight. <laughs> <laughs>